serious after the scandal understood yeah okay okay so what happened was in an uh, enron was the largest supplier of natural gas and electricity okay just an introduction of enron okay so whoever comes to study the audit or assurance needs to know about two scandals one among them is this one the next would be studied in the latest chapter all right okay okay so due to the enron scandal okay it became evident that there are loopholes in accounting system all right there are loopholes in auditing system okay which yes. the directors or the auditors might use to their own benefit understood yes. okay so what happened was in enron scandal all the accounts or most of the accounts in the company's balance sheet were manipulated okay and this was used or done by using market to market accounting system as well as creating special purpose entity okay and yeah. this created a window for the directors in the enron okay to create fictitious assets or fictitious cost or fictitious amounts in order to be entered into fs clear yes so see, we have ias and ifrs that governs all the accounting systems right okay yes so what happens if they use the same and manipulate the accounts understood yes okay so due to this what happened was in 2001 quarter of 2001 enron actually announced that it had 638 million loss all right okay and yes. it also had 1.2 billion reduction in share uh, shareholders equity all right but mind you this was all created all right this was all deliberately created this was all made up okay in order yes. to extort the company understood okay yep and um, who audited enron arthur anderson all right so the big four yep. companies that you know now were actually big five understood so among yep. that yep. big five it was arthur anderson understood so what happened yeah. they blinked their eye or they turned a blind eye towards whatever was being discovered in enron understood yes so you now know why these rules and regulations exist or why the acca has been you know very strict about auditors clear okay yep so this actually created you know created a bad wave towards all the professional associations understood okay yep. because if they can if the auditors can do something like this how would the public trust the audit uh, trust the auditors clear yes okay so what did arthur anderson did uh, the employees did something that was very you know unethical right they you know shredded down all the documents that were against whatever was being happening in the enron clear okay yeah now this created a rift right this created something that was uh, you know that made public lose confidence over acca understood okay, okay? clear yeah. not lose over but yeah to some extent people started questioning right if the auditors can do this then what would happen okay in the future so all the potential investors all the public got you know a negative feedback from the professional association understood okay yeah. now as a result of this you know uh, things were got uh, things got out okay everyone you know uh, knew what happened right so all the employees that worked in the uh, company was you know arthur anderson company was uh, laid off that means they were uh, you know terminated they were uh, you know made out of the company right and these people yeah. had uh, you know more to lose because no one was ready to hire them understood yeah. okay because some or the other way all this happened with the knowledge of employees as well right yeah clear yeah everyone was clear. involved yeah. yes 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 so everyone was involved basically yeah yeah everyone uh, maybe someone innocent but everyone was involved in this right 
nobody yeah. you know whistle blow whistle blowing means uh, someone who you know tell the uh, public or tell the authoritative uh, authority that something is going on here right nobody was ready yes clear yes okay so indirectly it affected everyone right yes okay so this was a huge scandal it actually you know brought down the acca image it brought down all the chartered accountancy profession image images clear okay yes so as a result of this there had to be something very strong foundation to every auditors right so that's yes. why rules and regulations exist okay and that's why corporate governance exist okay corporate governance is something that you're going to look towards the next chapter understood yes okay so yep. it was enron scandal that led to a new wave of new rules and regulations in the association understood yes. okay now this was something that tarnished the uh, professional body's image right so in order to try and get back the trust into the audit profession okay and isa was set up okay or the standard setters were set up okay and they mainly took three initiatives understood yes okay the first initiative was harmonization of auditing procedures that means every auditing procedures would be in harmony with one another or everything would be connected okay and everything would be simultaneously simultaneously carried out clear now yes they also brought in audit quality standards so audit were based upon quality standards that means if it lacks the quality or if it lacks something that is not there it is not a perfect audit understood okay yes. and they also brought in strict ethical code of conduct understood yes okay now moving on so how does the regulatory environment work see regulatory environment is something that regulates a profession right okay so for auditors or for uh, people who follow acca okay they have three regulatory environment okay the first one is the national corporate law okay clear so yes. in that national corporate law can you see the screen or see no you, i wasn't sharing right no no Sorry. that i was looking i was looking in the pdf I, you were looking PDF at the pdf yeah. yeah okay so you see i'm here all right okay so the first body was the national corporate law okay so in that national corporate law we have got the companies act 2006 okay in the uk yeah. and we have also got the sarbanes oxley act in us clear now the second yes. element or the second uh, regulatory environment is the auditing standards as i told you before same like you have studied ias ias and ifr as an fr okay or this ones that you have studied uh, before this uh, before we started double okay yes we have fr standards right right financial reporting standards so same way we also have international standards on auditing that is isas understood okay yes. so standards are simply put in simple language we can say that it is the rules according to which we do certain procedures in the audit clear so that is international standards on auditing understood so whatever you uh, study in the coming chapters would be standards the difference is that unlike fr you don't need to study or know the number of the standard that is we are studying understood okay you just yes. need to know what it is okay and the third element is the or third regulatory environment is the code of ethics okay now who needs an audit okay see if yes. you are a big company it is compulsory by law okay now when we study double as i have told you before every company is a big company for us okay we are studying yes. this on the perspective of being a big company understood Yes. Okay, so if you are a big company, you are compulsorily required to perform audit. Understood? And why yes. is that compulsory? See, every company, every uh, most of the big companies are listed companies. That is, they are listed in stock exchange, right? They are publicly available. Yes. Okay, so especially yes. for the public, publicly available company, it is very important. Okay, and why is that? 
see companies and the economy is directly linked okay so if the company grows the economy grows understood yes okay now the second one all the companies except the small companies are required to perform audit okay now yes. who are the small companies okay so the small companies are the ones whose turnover is less than 10.2 million that means their sales is less than 10.2 million understood yes okay and their gross asset is less than 5.1 million okay and they yes. have got employees less than 50 million so all these three would make it a small company understood and small yes. companies are not required to do audit audit compulsorily understood no okay yes. however there is an exception okay however there is an exception okay the exception is that okay if they are a small company and they are in a financial institution or a financial trading okay for example bank insurance etc and they are yes. quoted in stock exchange then they are required to do the audit understood yes clear if yes. your company regardless of whether it is big or small if it is quoted in stock exchange then you are required to perform the audit okay see yes. there are two uh, you know companies in terms of stock exchange one is listed and the other is non listed clear so listed yes. is basically you have registered your registered your company with stock stock exchange okay and you are trading your shares in the stock exchange understood clear yes now non listed or unlisted company is when okay you are not listed in the stock exchange but still you are a big company understood yes and all the big companies are required to perform audit on a compulsory basis except small entities okay i am just summarizing this okay and small entities who have been listed and who are into financial institutions okay or uh, who are into you know banking insurance etc they are required to perform audit clear simple understood yes asi bhai send this link to you okay i am not gonna upload this on youtube because the house okay. is not silent today okay <laughs> yeah. okay so the next but, topic but is you know, but the yeah. thing is that the, but the, you know the, the background sound is very less so you can upload it It's not too much. I see. Okay, I'll see. I'll see. I'll see. Thank you. Okay, next one. Reasons for exempting small companies from audit. So, if it is exempted, there is a question, right? Why? Okay. So, why is first one? In small companies, suppose you are starting a company with your maybe your friends, right? And yeah. your investment is particularly low. Suppose. Okay. then what would you do you and your partners would manage the company together right yes you won't hire a ceo you won't hire a cfa or you won't hire a cfo right yes you would run that company all by yourself right yes okay so there is no distinction between the manager and the owner so there is no agency relationship there is no stewardship understood yeah there is and the accountability completely falls upon the shareholders right so there is this, so there is no basis for you to conduct audit understood yes second one all the advising that we do over the small companies it is actually limited towards their recording of the transactions and their taxes clear there is yeah. not much we can do there clear yeah, no yes if the accounting if if the records and if the things are very big then it falls under big companies and they are compulsorily required to rec- uh, audit right yes but if it is a small company it is manageable by themselves and the scope is limited to just accounting and tax okay you can just advise over these two things okay so there is no audit required clear yes okay 
now in small companies what we do uh, what does the auditor actually do they take the transactions they take the samples over the years they do auditing over it right so in small yeah. companies there is nothing that we could do actually we can't take samples because relatively the size is also small clear okay and when the yeah. whole economy is con uh, concerned a small entity is just still very low in terms of returns right because big companies are giving more to the economy understood now the last one if it is a small entity then that means it is expensive to handle for small entities clear because audit actually incurs some cost understood yes yeah. okay now who can be an auditor okay so there is a regulation or there is a restriction to who can be auditor okay suppose no. i am a bcom graduate can i be an auditor no no right so yeah. to enter into the audit profession you need a recognition from a supervisory body understood okay yes. and they can be the rsb or the rqb okay yeah, one of the recognized supervisory body and the uh, or we can call it as recognized qualifying body okay so these are the yes. people or foundation which gives auditors clear yes okay example acca or the ica indian ca understood yes clear no yeah now what is the dis difference between rqb and rsb see rqb is something that is authorized by the government or state clear okay so once you have qualified from that professional body you can directly work as an auditor okay this is the same as an indian ca working for themselves right so after once yeah. you pass ca your signature is valid clear yes same way once you pass acca in uk your signature is valid okay or for that yeah. matter other countries who approve acca whichever country is approving acca there also your signature is valid understood yes and like ica there are some discussions going on with ica and acca in order to exchange their members right so once it gets yes, I, worded I, I heard that and i read it on bbc yeah. or something yeah once the word is word it is out yeah because you know uh, the indian caas are uh, finding it difficult to work there in uk and uae and stuff and the other countries yeah. because they are not you know legally uh, you know they are not legally permissible to use their signature or use their auditing activity there so there is uh, yeah. a discussion uh, between the ica and acca in order to you know make the members uh, exchange their signature uh, you know exchange their working qualification so sometimes in the future maybe in 2 to 3 years maybe in india it would be valid you know our signatures would be valid like the acca signature or ica acca signature acca signature oh. would be valid here as well as ica signature would be valid there okay they are under discussion okay. nothing is as of certain now but they are under discussion clear yes when i yes. you know i told to my class about this they were like no we don't mean that <laughs> they told that uh, you know uh, by being exclusive acc has some value right so when yeah. that is taken away it doesn't have any special thing right so they were yeah. saying like no we don't need that <laughs> okay so yeah. what is rsb rsb is recognized supervisory body okay so rsb yeah. allows the members to conduct audits in company only clear yes okay so if you are a member from rsb or rqb okay but you are connected with that company you are going to take on then you can't do audit clear so there is an exception yes. okay now this is because auditor should always be completely independent of possible threats okay so possible threats as in 
if you know a company beforehand what would you do your judgment would be biased right yes yeah you would have a more susceptibility to blind eye or turn away your eyes in front of the you know the mistakes there understood yes so exactly. you will always yeah. yeah you will always have a tendency to not care for their mistakes or to not care for the misstatements that is there clear so yes. in order to avoid that acca has brought a, brought in a rule which would disallow any rsb or rqb qualified auditor to work from a company that they are connected with understood yes. okay now who can't be an auditor so there are people who can't be an auditor first one if the employees auditor is the yeah employees of the company so even if yes. he is an acca he can't be an auditor in that particular company it can he can be an internal auditor but he can't be an external auditor understood yes now second one people who are directors or secret it is not of it is or okay so directors or secretary of the company can't work as an auditor clear yeah third one business partners or employees of the company can work as an auditor okay their judgments will be biased will always be biased understood yes okay so the people who have personal connection with the company can be an auditor understood their judgment will be biased yes. maybe my you know my husband is working there in a company i can't audit that company understood yes now fifth one apart from all these if there is any chance that this auditor is going to sacrifice his code of ethics then he can't be an auditor understood yes now this is really important who appoints the auditor okay so first things first shareholders are for whom the auditors work for right they are liable to the shareholders okay so the first one or the first person to or the first people to appoint an auditor would be the shareholders understood yes clear so if there is a yes. obligation to appoint the auditor the shareholders can appoint an auditor of their choice understood yes second one if suppose the shareholders haven't appointed an auditor okay and you have to fill in an auditor because it is compulsory understood yes okay so this is called a casual vacancy right okay or this is called a first auditor maybe your company uh, has just turned big or if you have comp- uh, started a big company okay both both yeah. wise okay and you have to appoint an auditor but the shareholders haven't done that yet okay so yeah. as a director they can appoint the auditor understood yes okay but this should be approved by all the members or directors in the shareholders in a meeting understood yes now suppose the shareholders has an uh, haven't appointed the auditor the directors haven't appointed the auditor but the audit is compulsory so they have to do the audit then the secretary of the state would appoint the auditor understood yep okay now all the auditors in the public companies are appointed through agm agm as an annual general meeting understood yes okay now auditors of private companies are appointed until they are removed so in private companies if an auditor is already there okay so they are going to be a continuous auditor until they are being removed understood yes clear yes these are very important these are the basics the basics to which the next chapters will be based upon clear yes okay now when will the appointed auditor will not be a shareholder's choice that is the question okay first things first if the appointed auditor is their first time in that company or the company is it is their first audit in the company as the company started then that particular auditor might be appointed by the directors understood yes okay clear now second yep. one if there is a casual vacancy that is the auditor the auditor who has been there all along suddenly resigned okay and you need a replacement 
okay and there is a casual vacancy the shareholders have not appointed the auditor so the directors would appoint clear yes now see the company is it isn't uh, you know compulsory or a rule of thumb that the company should always choose one auditor to audit their works okay so they can change if it is required to change they can change if the company's existing auditor has resigned understood yes okay so a normal reappointment would be done by the directors and it would be done by using the agm that is annual general meeting understood okay hello hello can you hear me yes no is is yes is better now is better now before it was like breaking okay okay now it's good right yeah i have okay. one question like yes. how many auditors can one company hire see auditors are a company itself okay okay that means it's a firm it's going to be an audit audit firm okay? okay and that particular firm would have many auditors within there all right so they are going to spare basically send a team over the company in order to conduct the audits okay okay understood yes 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 okay. got it now for example ey is an is an accounting and audit audit firm right yes yeah so they uh, if a company wants to audit they would approach ey and ey yeah. would give them an engagement team who would audit their work okay so likewise ey would have many engagement team who would you know attend to all of its clients understood yes okay now this reappointment basically in real essence there is no such agm done because you know sometimes shareholders would say you appoint clear so yeah. this is not a necessary clear okay yeah. so summing up appointment of auditors happens in agm by an ordinary resolution okay and directors yeah. would fill a casual vacancy or first appointment okay and that first appointment or commencement would be agreed upon the agm okay and yes. if these two hasn't been done haven't been done then the secretary of state is going to appoint the auditors themselves clear yes okay now yes. this particular auditor is going to be there in the office okay on one whole agm that is agm happens annually right yes. so if you at a, uh, if you appoint one auditor in this agm then that particular auditor would resume or continue to work there until next agm and until next agm the company says okay we need the same auditor then he would continue as well okay and this is a routine clear yes now in case of private companies they always have a choice to not conduct the agm okay and uh, this is allowed only if the shareholders are okay with it understood okay in case of public company or in case of uh, companies that has been listed they would have to conduct an agm in order to appoint okay but for private company it is an optional thing as far as the shareholders are not against it understood yes okay no clear yes okay i will stop here i don't want you to cloud everything up okay so tomorrow revise the first chapter revise until this one i have taken and also when you get time revise the standards as well clear yes okay so we'll yes, stop okay. here is that fine whatever is being taken is understood yes the, the recording option is where is it recording Okay. Yes, yes, it is recording. Okay. I'll send you the link once the recording.